script? <laughs> no script. No I don't script. do scripts. I, I just don't work well with them. I'm terrible so. without a script. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. So today we're going to try and do a little upgrade on our uh, Coachman Pursuit Class A motorhome. This is a 2019 uh, Coachman Motorhome, it's 29 foot, it's on a Ford F53 chassis. Uh, and I believe it's 18,000 pound chassis. Anyway, the reason we're doing this is this RV is a gas motorhome uh, and it works pretty well. Uh, we bought it and have taken several trips in it. And then for approximately a little over a year while we were building this building, we lived in it. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and uh, I kind of equate it to the same as Apollo 13 when they climbed into the little <laughs> capsule yeah. to make it back. Yeah. This was our lifeboat for over just over a year. Yep. So anyway, uh, the problem that we have with it, and we seriously spent the last couple months talking about upgrading it. Yeah. Financially, that's not really an option for us. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to. Yeah. Oh, there's some beautiful motorhomes out there. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, the reason we thought about upgrading it are primarily two things. One is, uh, I don't like driving it. Yeah. And Maggie hates driving it. <laughs> it, uh, Maybe. yeah, it handles well, it accelerates well, it'll drive down the road at 75 miles an hour. What it won't do is stay on the road if there's a gust of wind. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, uh, a lot more better feeling at 50. <laughs> uh, you know, like I said, we both have quite a bit of time in an uh, occupation that's fairly dangerous. Mm -hmm. The most danger I've ever felt that either of us were in were, was in West Virginia when a semi passed us on the side of a mountain road going down the thing. It was a four lane highway. With a curve. And I thought we were going over the freaking guardrail and down the mountain. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway, we spent the last trip we took, we went across the top of the upper Michigan. peninsula of Michigan. And uh, the speed limit on that road was 70 miles an hour. It was only a two lane road and we couldn't go over 60 because it was windy. Yeah. If I was over 60, I didn't think I was gonna stay on the road. And with all that traffic coming at you, you know, I felt bad for the people that were trying to kill themselves going around us. And I, I really thought we were gonna see a head on collision before we got across that road. So uh, at that point I decided we had to do something. And anyway, so what we found is uh, a free fix that we're gonna do, and also a uh, Roadmaster rear anti-sway bar. And all the reviews we've seen online said that that's supposed to fix the handling. So we're gonna put those in and see how it goes. So watch along, and if you've got one of these motorhomes, we'll let you know if it was worth the $800 for the sway bar and the free fix. And, and if this works, we'll tell you what the second problem was. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, I can tell you the second problem. Maggie wants a laundry in it. So yeah. we've got that covered also, and uh, that'll Maybe. be a separate vis video. <laughs> yeah, we're trying it. <laughs> yep, all right. Hope you enjoy it. Okay. Okay, so here we are. The brackets are in place, and it was close to hitting and mounting up. The difference was, uh, it's hitting these shocks and it looks to me like you know with this label up and all that and then the instructions said this had to be pointed down so when i put it in like this it looked to me like i had it right but what i'm thinking is i'm going to turn it over and see if it's clears these better spun over and if it does then it'll work if it doesn't at this point if this is the way it's supposed to be it will not work on this motorhome and that won't make my day, but let's see what we got. Okay, so while we're looking at the American flag, that did not work. That is for a 20,000 pound and up chassis, and mine is an 18,000 pound. You wouldn't think there'd be a ton of difference there. Okay, so today we're revisiting this project that we started about a month ago, putting a sway bar on this 2019 uh, F53 chassis coachman pursuit precision so what happened about a month ago was we got a sway bar in uh, that said it fit f53 chassis 2019 and it said in the fine print 20,000 pound to 24,000 i think gross vehicle weight chassis so anyway uh maggie and i spent about 
probably three days under this RV trying to mount that up. Turned out it just would not fit. And so anyway, then did a little more research and realized that this chassis is an 18,000 pound chassis and they're not the same. The difference is the rear axle. So uh, I'll show you that in a bit, but the rear axle on this one has an aluminum cast uh, differential cover and that denotes the 18,000 pound chassis. The other one is a welded on steel cover that you can't remove. So anyway, after a little bit of issues with shipping the other one back, uh, which cost about $130 to do, we ended up getting this one. In the meantime, steel prices went up quite a bit. And also there are far fewer 18,000 pound chassis motor homes than there are 20,000 and up. So this one cost about $1,600. So add in the 130 to ship the other one back, get a little more expensive. Anyway, we're gonna put it on today though. The nice thing is this one does not use those shackle bolts to mount it. Uh, it just goes through. <laughs> Hi people. <laughs> uh, it doesn't use the shackle bolts to, to put it on. It just literally mounts where the rear shock mounts mount. I think I can do this all with uh, my battery operated impact wrench and a torque wrench. So, That'll be way nicer. Anyway, let's do it. Okay, so step one of this is to take this bracket, frame bracket, and mount it using those two lower bolts of the four there. So the first thing we'll do is get the impact and take those off. And this takes a 21 millimeter socket. Okay, the next step is to take our hanger brackets, kind of tuning fork there. Anyway, take our hanger brackets and hang them from the frame brackets that we just installed. And they use these bolts with lock washers, or not lock washers, lock nuts. And you want the bolt heads over by the leaf springs so that as it goes up and down, the leaf spring doesn't contact the bolt. Alrighty, so on that, I say just tighten those up so you don't squish the plastic bushing. And a clue to the chassis size. There it is. 18K. Could that possibly be 18,000? <laughs> okay, so while we're down here and I got good light, the differential cover on this 18,000 pound axle is this aluminum finned one that actually can be removed. 90% of the RVs you see on the road have a black welded cover on the F53 chassis. There are far, far more of those 20,000 and up chassis than there are these 18,000s. 
So when I YouTubed, that should have been a clue. <laughs> but, oh well, here we are. Okay, so here's the other side. Same exact process. We'll take our tuning fork, <laughs> bracket, slide the bolt in, start to nut. Okay, next we will use an inch and an eight socket and wrench to remove the shock bolt. Okay, now we will remove the shock bolt on this side. All righty. This is DeWalt half inch battery impact gun, uh, 20 volt XR, does a heck of a job. Like I said, it's uh, pull those bolts out. That's about a limit of what it wants to do, but uh, it did that nicely. Okay, so I've got the sway bar drug under here. And I'm going to just loosely mount it so it hangs from the brackets. Okay, so now the sway bar is hanging from both brackets and it'll allow me to see where the bushings go on, which mount to the back of the shock mounts. Okay, so now that the sway bar is hanging, I brought this floor jack down here and with it I can raise it into the correct spot positioning without having to work so hard. So now, at this point, I'm going to get ready to grease the bushings so that we can mount the bushing clamp. And also with those, mount on the inside, if you can see it, there's one of these that has a rounded hex head. And one of them that has a regular bolt. So the regular bolt goes to the top, the rounded hex head goes to the bottom. Okay, so we'll put the bolts, bolt and washer for the top hole in. Without knocking everything that I've got going on over here over. Scooty 
Dang. They're so far up in there. It's very difficult. Shoot! Yeah, we might not get it filmed. Okay, now we can see that that goes right there, and we have to put this grease on it. So we'll do that next. Nice. Finger load of grease. And this, they warn you, is kind of messy. Wouldn't be maybe as messy. If I wasn't laying on my back underneath a freaking RV. But this grease has to be coating the entire inside of this. Or it will squeak, they say. So that is well covered. And I'm going to grab this other one. Because I've got to do it too. I'm going to wipe off some of this excess grease onto that one. Okay, now I'm going to clean my finger before I touch my camera. <laughs> and this split bushing goes right over the bar, right in line with those bolts. Okay, I'll move to the other side. Slide this split bushing in place where it goes. And wipe my hand off. One of the things that's nice about hanging your sway bar from the brackets and then supporting it with the jack stand is it allows you to know exactly where those bushings are going to end up. The sway bar that I spent three days under here trying to mount that didn't work. I had grease all over that freaking thing. Very nice, very nice. Okay, so with that in place, i put this one in place. Alrighty then, let's move to the next side. Okay, I'm pretty sure I can take the floor jack down now. Get it out of the way. That'll be helpful. Okay, good deal. Okay, those are tight. Uh, now, it's just a matter of putting the shocks back on. Working everything back. So I'll go back to the other side. Okay, now we'll put the shocks back on. And there's a problem. Okay, so I'm gonna take these bolts out and let that rotate down. 
Okay. Problem solved. Hopefully. Okay, so here's where we're at. That shot goes in and lines up fine without the bolt in it. Now then, I put the bolt back in. I already took the washer off. With the washer, it hit real hard. With that bolt in, it doesn't quite line up. And it's hitting on that bolt. So I'm gonna grind down some of that head of that bolt and see what I can do. Okay, so the button head screw didn't give me enough clearance to get the shock mount back in. So I just got a regular grade five, uh, three eighths by one inch bolt. And you can see I took and put it on the grinder and ground it down. It's about half the thickness of the head, a little deeper on that side. Anyway, uh, I just put it in and that gives me the clearance I need. So let's do that and tighten her up and get this thing finished. Aha, and it's gonna work. Shock bolt goes in. deal. Do the other one just like the other one. Okay, the final test <laughs> of this. Will be to raise this up and put it in the bracket. And I guess it's going to attempt to be real easy. So it slides up. Line up with a hole. And put stop on. Not on it. Okay, see if we can do that on the other side. <laughs> Have to watch pinching your fingers. Okay, so the rear sway bar is on, and probably the smart thing to do would be go drive it and see what kind of improvement it made. But there's also this free fix that they talk about on the internet, and it involves the front sway bar. And it involves taking this bolt out of this arm and moving it back one hole. And I'm no genius. <laughs> I'm not even smart. But... If this lever is reduced in length, it will increase the amount of force that it takes to move it. So, uh, like I said, you can watch all kinds of YouTube videos about it and stuff and everything, but I figured while I'm in here and I'm under it, I might as well change this too and try and get the maximum benefit because uh, without bad mouthing anything or anybody, this thing's scared to drive. Okay, so we got a washer, we got a bolt. We gotta go over to the other side and do it as well. Hmm. Wonder 
turn if that's going to slam down. I'm going to get the floor jack in here. See what I can do. Okay. Okay, don't okay. Okay, let's go with the other one. Alrighty then, the other side, tighten it up. Okay, so we moved the brackets from this hole to that hole, which is supposed to strengthen the uh, amount of sway bar that's used. One thing that I see with that is this leaf spring, where that was below it, is now above it, but there's nothing there to hit. Right, there's clearance there. Clearance, clearance. So, we will road test this. If I don't like it or decide I don't like it or see anything on the internet uh, that says you shouldn't do this or if you have any comments because of that, like I said, I'd love to hear from a RV tech or something or a Ford tech or even a guy that worked on a Ford line for a while. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. We're gonna go road test this beast. Okay, so here are the tools that I used. A uh, creeper, some jack stands. I actually used four jack stands, but I didn't carry the other two around. I had some curbing under there. Then the main tool was the half-inch DeWalt impact gun. I did use the 3 8 DeWalt impact gun as well for the smaller bolts. And then I had to use the, a drill, a 3 8 drill, to drill out the bottom hole on those shock brackets for some reason. I think it might've just been some heavy paint. Uh, the top holes, the bolts went in fine, but I couldn't get them through the bottom. So I just cleaned out the hole with that 3 8 drill bit. Uh, ball peen hammer I used on the front. The front uh, is a 15 millimeter and an 18 millimeter. So the nuts an 18 millimeter, you can use whatever. What I did is I put the impact, a 15 millimeter on the impact and just held the 18 millimeter side with a wrench. And then the rest of these wrenches and sockets and adapters were all used for the rear mounting thing. Uh, did use a drift pin to get the bolts lined up a couple places and also to drive out the bolts on the front one. So, so thanks for watching to this point if you still are. And uh, we're going to go test drive this thing as soon as we clean up a little bit. Maggie won't let me in it when I'm all greasy. So, <laughs> anyway, thanks. What do you Hello. think? <laughs> It's much better than it was. That's what I think. All right, I'd be the filmer. Well, just for him, put it on me. So we just came across 450, and uh, that is a good simulation of a West Virginia road. <laughs> and uh, it's hard to tell. It doesn't really change when the road is.
cur real curvy and stuff, but then we came across 50 and actually passed some semis that were coming the other direction, and it did seem much more stable and able to drive a faster speed. So now we're going to run out here to Washington. We'll see what happens when we pass some semis at 55 or so. There's plenty of open ground. Today there's supposed to be a seven mile an hour uh, wind, and with that a new addition, like I said, I'm going 65 miles an hour, and it's staying planted on the road like it never has before. So it looks good. All right, so. Uh, we just went out and test drove the RV. We put, I don't know, about probably 30 miles on it. Uh, but we did some 60 mile an hour two lane highway and we did some interstate and it is a lot better. Yep, it's a whole bunch better. So anyway, your miles may vary. Be sure to comment and uh, tell us if you've got an RV, if you've done anything to it to make it handle better or what maybe would be the next step we should do if we want to improve the handling even more. Sounds good to me. Have a good one. Thanks for watching. See you later. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Have a good one, y'all.